Democratic Senator Mary Landrieu lost in her re-election bid. She had a runoff election this weekend, and she did lose, as expected, to Republican Bill Cassidy. We knew that there was a very high uh, probability that she would lose, but she actually lost by 12 points, which is pretty significant. Um, in the initial election a couple of months ago, or a little bit over a month ago, um, it was obviously much tighter. You had multiple uh, third-party candidates in there. Um, now, with just her against the Republican, she lost pretty decisively. Um, now, we have a couple of different areas we want to touch on in regard to this. We're going to get some of the sort of inside the D.C. bubble think about why she lost and what the Democrats should do in response to it. But, um, but as I said, we're, we're, we don't find this too surprising, really. No, I actually don't think that the... Um, uh I don't think the result is surprising. Even the margin, the 12 No, points. no, she, she won. She beat Cassidy and the other candidates in the, on election night mm -hmm. in November. Just not by enough. 42-41. And she was the only Democrat on the ballot. So she was... And barely won at that. Right. And, and so she got... She was tapped out at 42%. Mm -hmm. And when you factor in that the people who finish second tend to do better in uh, runoffs, that Republicans always do better in runoffs, and that this was a Republican year for excitement, odds are she was going to, her turnout was, mm -hmm. might even be less than the 42, uh, and it was. So Nate Silver had her chances prior to election night at 99.8% likelihood of a Cassidy win. So <laughs> I, I certainly wasn't surprised at the result, nor the margin. And in fact, the fact that she lost by 12, that she got into the 40s, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, 46, 44, that's almost as well reason, reasonably as, as could be expected, although I think she tactically uh, made a number of uh, choices. She was out of money completely. Mm -hmm. She spent all her money. She, I mean, the difference in money was like 350000 two weeks before the election to $7 million the for Cassidy election. before the runoff. Yeah. She spent all her money trying to get, you need to get 50 plus one to win in Louisiana on election night. And everybody was like, you're not going to do it. You have to have some money left over. This was at a time when, what if the Republicans gained five seats and she's the sixth, mm -hmm. and the whole yeah. country is going to focus on Louisiana for what happens here in December. As it turned well, out, think, the only debate was whether the Republicans would have 54 seats or 53 seats. And now they will have 54. Right. I think, yes, so her strategy obviously had some flaws, but we do know that statistically she had a better shot of winning on election night than she did if she lost on election night and had to go to the runoff. And perhaps she thought that uh, considering pretty much everyone knew that the election was going to be very rough for the Democrats, that in the wake of all of those losses, perhaps the national apparatus would be willing to throw more money to try to save her. Like she could afford to blow her entire wad on the original election, knowing that there would be donors that come in, which apparently did not. Well, again, if it had been, if, if, if control of the Senate was at stake, yeah. then I think there would have been a tremendous amount, no question, there would have been a tremendous amount of money that went to her. But uh, I also don't think that statistically her chance, I think if she had, as it turned out, she had no statistical chance anywhere. But mm -hmm. she couldn't, have, she wasn't getting 50 plus one. That's yeah. what everybody was saying yeah. to her. Now, look, if you have enough money, you make a case in this campaign, as it was here. She sort of limped to the finish line and nobody nationally cared. Yeah. I mean, we, do you think it had more to do with money than what the message was and what her record was? Yeah, yeah I don't, I think she's got a bad message. and, and she What has, was her message? I'll get the Keystone XL pipeline, perhaps, which she did support, and the vote failed. She's got a famous, the past you know, her weeks. brother and her. She come. The Landro family matters. I, I, I'm, I'm, her brother, I believe, is the mayor. He's the mayor. Mayor of New Orleans, um, and her family has a rich political history there. People mm -hmm. like the Landros in Louisiana, but you know, she there was no Democrat in this race, and mm -hmm. there was certainly no progressive, and there was no champion of the working people down there. There was no uh, champion of of, uh, of a true champion of people who'd been, uh, whose businesses had been destroyed, whose livelihoods had been destroyed by the, yeah. by the oil spill, you know, who was a significant champion to get New Orleans back on its feet. That, that, that probably did happen, but everybody in Louisiana, mm -hmm. Republicans and Democrats had a vested interest in taking in as much federal money there as possible. But it didn't pay off because, you know, we, we, we read it this morning in the morning meeting, but, the, you know, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it. Harry Truman actually said it incredibly well, but... When you have a Republican and a, and a person, a Democrat, and a Republican masquerading as a Democrat, mm. people will vote for the real Republican. Bill Cassidy is not the Tea Party candidate. He's not even, the, he wasn't nearly the most conservative candidate in that race. Uh, and in fact, he probably should have won the runoff by, mo by more. But some Tea Party candidates still don't trust Bill Cassidy because yeah. he's not conservative enough. But he's plenty conservative for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the standard conservative scale. And there weren't, you know, and, and Mary Landro is, is a, has been weak and afraid to run 
with the president and afraid to support Obamacare and afraid to support the things that a majority of Democrats in the United States Congress are afraid yeah. to support. Well, I got to say, if she would have run against the pipeline in Louisiana, I think she would have lost by a larger margin. That That's may be. entirely possible. But, you know, I don't know what keeps people afraid of losing by larger margins when you know you can't win by the margin at hand. So this clip from the CBS Evening News Saturday night, this was done right before... Mm -hmm. Right before the election, yes. Yeah, dur well, while people were voting, but before polls had closed. So they managed to do a story where they're like, hey, look, we know Mary Landers about to lose. Uh, what does it mean? And what it means is that CBS has not been paying attention to politics for mm -hmm. 25 years. Uh, and this is an insane, insane conversation between two people who don't know anything about politics and are masquerading as political experts. It's not just been a Republican year, as you saw in November, but it's actually becoming more and more difficult for any Democratic candidate in the Deep South now. Why is that? Well, part of it comes down to national versus local politics. Nationally, the Democratic Party is rated very low in the Deep South. A lot of the Southern conservatives feel that the party nationally has just become too liberal for them. So even when candidates like Mary Landrieu want to stress what they've done locally, it's that D after their name that makes things additionally difficult. If she does get beat, what does that mean? Well, it means that going forward, if the Democrats are going to compete in the Deep South, they're going to have to find candidates who can successfully break through and project maybe a more moderate image for a lot of those conservative voters. I don't doubt that there are going to be many Democrats who probably think that that is the lesson coming out of this. I mean, that's why we had some of the candidates that we did back uh, in the, the election last month. But it, it doesn't seem like the right path. It doesn't seem like they've been paying attention to the sorts of Democrats who lost and the sorts of Democrats who won on Election Day. Um, it's frustrating to see that, it's, especially in 2014. It's a crazy way to think. It's not paying any attention. That was the weekend anchor there and a reporter at CBS, Jim Axelrod, and their elections expert. And, I mean, he's two points where Democrats are t too liberal. Like, mm -hmm. like, like this Mary is Mary Landrieu is too liberal. Like, this is a party being run by George McGovern and Frank Church. Like, I mean, this is a, that is an era that does not exist. I'm sorry that Jesse Jackson is the voice of the Democratic Party, apparently, to this guy all of a sudden. Um, and so that's the first part, is that, is that Democrats are too liberal, which is just, again, it's insane. It's and insane. You, you have some, but real quick, I'm sorry, Wes, but he has some duty to correct that, to not just repeat it. He's supposed to be a journalist. It's insane because the Democratic Party these days is more conservative than Richard Nixon was. That's right. Yeah. On many uh, on, on a whole host of issues. And yeah. then the second point he makes there at the end, which is that if Democrats want to reverse this, he goes, Democrats will certainly want to remain competitive in the South, but if they do, they're going to need candidates who are maybe a little more moderate. Yeah. Implying that somehow Mary Landro, as as moderate a Democrat as you could have and still mm -hmm. be a Democrat, like yeah. Joe Manchin might be the only and Mark Pryor were maybe the only Democratic senators in the last session, who were more, more conservative, conservative yes. than Mary Landro. She couldn't be more conservative. I don't know what her heart is. Maybe she's a liberal at heart. But she mm -hmm. decided that politically, the way to yeah. get things done, the way to win in Louisiana, was to be incredibly conservative. So either he, he just doesn't know or mm -hmm. isn't paying attention or is just, again, not, it's not so much that. It's that he's trotting out what is essentially a right-wing Fox News talking point. But I don't even think he knows he's yeah. going to do no, it. No, he doesn't because that's how, how but, deeply it's permeated the conversation. And, and also the, the idea that, that the inability to distinguish between people voting for a party and the reason that they're voting for the party, and just assuming that it has to be that they're voting for the party, because uh, if you listed 20 policy positions, they agree with that party. That's simply not the case. When you poll people on particular policies, very often they will be much more liberal than the center-right idea of the country that we're supposed to have. But at the same time, they don't then vote for the party that actually has the majority of the time, those positions. I mean, they, they know they just don't like Obamacare, even if you list for them all of the different facets of Obamacare, and they like them pretty much down the line. It's not that they actually disagree with the actual policies. It's not that they disagree with what the party would actually accomplish. It's they don't feel any, any sort of valence attachment to the party. That when you, when you present yourself as a weak Democrat or as like a slightly more liberal version of the Republican in the race, they don't just look at the positions. You're supposed to have some sort of driving ideology, some sort of driving philosophy that engages people and inspires them. And that clearly didn't happen. It didn't happen for Mary Landry. It didn't happen around the country. It's just goddamn frustrating that for all the work that's been done at the Young Turks and at Media Matters and at Fire Dog Lake and I'm gonna, whatever other great sort of mm -hmm. liberal sites there are, 
the, the, the effort to change the conversation is that you still get, it was Anthony Salvanto, by the way, is the CBS elections expert, and Jim Axelrod, that you still get these guys who are seen on a regular basis by more than 20 million people a night, the three network news shows combined. Mm -hmm. They still have an audience. Yes, it's an older audience, but it's an audience. And they still trot out these tropes again as if we're in 1975 and we're debating Vietnam and there are two real sides to the issue. And it's depressing. It's freaking depressing mm -hmm. that no one, there's a lot of ways you could talk interestingly about the Mary Landro race the night of the election. That was not one of them. That was purely, uncategorically ignorant from CBS.